welcome back to another episode of Betting Bootcamp. Today I'm going to sharpen you up a little bit more and hopefully get you into the habit of becoming a professional gambler. I'm Tony from BetAnalyst.com. Let's crack on. How to win more with value betting? By simply applying logic. Let's start by agreeing. You are here watching this video for one reason. You want to profit from betting. Secondly, you understand that bookmakers don't owe you a living and they're going to make it difficult for you. Betting is a battle simply between two opponents. Bookies are not your friend, they are the enemy. Your job is to extract the bookmaker's money and their job is to take your money. So the question is, are you ready to put the odds in your favour? Just a quick one on value betting, what it is, because I often get uh, criticised for not uh, uh, covering this, but uh, just in short, you should know what it is already, but uh, here it is. Yeah, simply put, value betting is when the risk-reward ratio is in your favour. Value betting is getting better than true odds, also called the edge. And you find value bets because there is a lot of competition amongst bookmakers, and that creates an imbalance of odds and you can take advantage. I also just want to mention that value betting is much more lucrative than arbitrage, also known as short betting. I've covered this in another video, but again quickly, just for those who haven't heard them, with arbitrage you are always taking insurance. It's like on the flip of a coin, if you're getting 2.10 on one side and 1.95 on the other side, arbitrage gamblers would still take the 1.95 even though it's below the true odds of two. It's the really it's like the business equivalent of drop shipping. You know, people don't want to take the risk, they don't want to buy products, they don't want to do anything. So, you know, this risk free creates low margins. I mean it's limited. In many situations, you are actually giving value back, just like I explained already. Arbitrage is more work in that you need to bet both sides of the coin, don't you? My advice, take a betting marker and cut out the crap. So what we need to get you to understand today is very simple. Betting is a numbers game. Every pip counts to your bottom line. Now, just imagine that you owned a juice bar and you were selling juice for one dollar for, you know, a, a drink, yeah, and uh, you'd sold a hundred in the day. Now, if you were selling them for one dollar ten, you would make another ten percent profit, wouldn't you? Well, actually, more because you had to buy the product. But uh, in this particular case, you know, that's the point about pips. Every little number that you get in your advantage counts as extra. So by refining your approach, even losing punters can break even. You imagine somebody that was losing on average just 2% every time they bet over a long period of time. If they could remove that 2%, you know, the advantage for the bookmakers, they would start breaking even. And break even punters, of course, would start to win money if they were getting the 2% advantage. And of course, on top of that, those people who are already profiting by doing things even, uh, you know, really getting involved and going a little bit deeper and scrapping and scraping for the best odds could get even extra out of the game. For the sake of this argument, we're going to use a flip of a coin because it's the easiest way to explain anything. You know, if I started talking about uh, real odds like football matches or tennis games, then obviously it's a little bit more sort of difficult to explain. But a flip of a coin is odds of two and two for each side. If you was uh, flipping this coin, right, uh, 500 times a month, you know, 500 bets per month, that's 16.7 a day, right? With $100 stakes, now imagine, if you were just betting the odds of two, yes, you would have a 0% profit. You would also not lose, but you would have a 0% profit. Uh, so, sorry, you wouldn't gain anything. 
so to say. Right? At 202, you would get 2%. And at 205, you'd have 5%. So that means 0%, no profit. 2%, 1,000 profit. And 5% would give you 2,500 profit in that one month. So that's very simple, isn't it? If you think 16.7 bets per day, I'm assuming a lot of you guys already do more than that. So, and that's with just like low stakes of uh, $100 and it's 500 bets per month. So if you found 500 bets with a 5% advantage, you and you were placing 100 on each, you'd have two and a half thousand profit. 1,000 bets with $100 stakes would, of course, increase that again, right? At 2%, you'd have a 2,000 profit per month. And at 5%, you would have 5,000 profit per month. And it gets better. The more, you, more bets you make, the bigger the stake you make, the more you will make. So once you're involved, you can start increasing you know, your, your actual leverage of what you're doing. So if you was making 2% on 5,000 bets a month with 100 stakes, then you'd have 10,000 a month profit. And of course, with 5%, it would go up to 25,000 profit. This is how syndicates start working. They start thinking about the numbers game. And then, of course, raising the stakes, getting more outlets for it. But we're going to come on to that in a minute. But 5,000 bets per month with $200 uh, stakes, you'd have 20,000 profit with 2%. And you'd have 50,000 profit with 5%. So, you should target. This is important. You needed more EV bets, right? That's expected value bets. They're out there. There's tons of, them, tons of them every day, and you've just got to find them. But relative to that, you know, as you go along, you increase your stakes. So one way or the other, you're going to catch them out. So the more bets, the more stakes, the more you're going to win. Higher margin bets, just for a quick tip, are worth bigger stakes. So if you found something with like a, a you know, expected value uh, of uh, 10%, double up on it. And if it was just 2%, just keep it as it was, you know, like a 1% of your bank. But this is the most important part, that you implement strategy based on your own success. Everybody works in different ways, right? You're going to have advantages. Some other people have uh, different advantages. So you've just got to take what's ever on the table to you. So you've got to try to figure it out within, you know, the realms of possibilities. So I'm going to now give you some advice for getting bigger odds. I recommend that you get at least 10 betting accounts to start with. Right? Anything less is like pissing against the wind. It's going to come back in your face. You know you're not giving yourself enough opportunity. So this is also important. We all live in different countries, don't we? And we've all got uh, you know different connections, different networks. And uh, I mean, if you're just living somewhere where you know your market is pretty well distinct, you're going to have to do research to find out which bookmakers are available to you. As you can see here, this is using one of the, uh, this is using Odds Portal. This is just like a, a screenshot of uh, some bookmakers there, right? But, you know, they probably got 100 bookmakers on there. There's another 1,000 bookmakers that they've not got on there. So you've got to just try to figure out which bookmakers are most suitable for your actual purpose. So I would suggest that you start by looking on, you know, the bookmakers that have got their highest payouts. They, they, give the, they take the lowest juice and they pay the most back to you. There's an example as such, right? I just ordered this. You hit the arrow. Once you've opened the game, you just hit the arrow there um, on the right-hand side. And as you can see, the payout is then in declining order, right? So the best payout is 98.4 and the next one is 98.1 and so on, right? Now, just one word of warning is, obviously, 
you know, when you need good bookmakers. And I wouldn't necessarily trust uh, one expert or call, but uh, the Russian outfits and, uh, yeah, they've got a reputation for not paying unless you're losing. So, but uh, again, that's something for you to figure out and we can talk about that in another video. Right, but payout is not the only dynamic for getting best odds. Believe me, I've even had uh, bets with uh, lottery companies, you know, on fixed odds sports betting, and they've left a lot of uh, profits. Even though they've got some massive margins in their favour, they're not actually in their favour if they've not got the odds right. So in this case, as you can see, those uh, two banditos appear at the top again, call bet and one expert. But, uh, you know, on the, if you're looking at the line, but you can order it um, in, you know, to find out which where, where the juice is. I would definitely suggest a marathon bet to one of the uh, companies there. Asian odds are more for sort of, uh, you know, for people with uh, like these broker accounts as such, as is uh, bet in Asia. But uh, again, I only took a small portion of bookmakers. As you can see, if you look down at the bottom, actually, on the number one, you know, the OM team, right? You can see the actual best odds because it's uh, uh, lightened is uh, bet 365 at uh, five. I think most people can get Bet365 accounts. Now, I'm also going to recommend to you that, you know, you've obviously got a betting bank or you should have one, which should be separated from your sort of personal money, right? So if you take half of this betting bank, let's just say that you had 10,000, 10,000 of what, it doesn't really matter. But if you had 10,000, you've got 5,000 now that you should disperse between different betting accounts. So if you had 10 bookmakers, you could put 500 in each if they was all pretty much equivalent in terms of uh, what, you know, your expected value with these bookmakers was, yeah? Right, now you're gonna keep the other half back for reloading. This is the important part, right? Some of those accounts are gonna go down to zero, whereas other accounts will probably go 2,000, 3,000, right? The object of the game is you put 5,000 in, and now the balance of these accounts have to be more than the 5,000. So in this case, if they are 6,000, yeah, you actually have 1,000 in the lead, right? But if one of the accounts has got 3,000 and uh, three of them have got zero, right? those three with the zero, you wanna start putting your next 500s in but you do not want to take out the 3,000. The second that you ask a bookmaker for a payout, a first payout, they're gonna have a look at your account and then that's when they're gonna identify what you're doing or if you haven't done it before, you know, if you haven't got any limits. Once you get to the stage of being limited or having the account blocked or slowed down, right, then that's the time when you can start saying, okay, send me my money or whatever, right? And uh, yeah. It's also important that you learn to build momentum, right? And so, I mean, it's just like life itself. You're, you know, when you're born, you can, you can't do much. And then you learn to crawl, then you learn to walk, and then you learn to run, and then you learn to run faster and so on, yeah? So in betting, if you're not that massively experienced with advantage betting, right? At first, just play the slow market. It's pretty much, you know, where you've got tons of time. You can start betting now for the weekend. You can start betting uh, on the same day, early in the day for the evening bets. Right? It's called building momentum and getting a feeling for the game. Yeah. Do not exceed 1% to 2% of your betting bank. Like I said, you know, if you've got this sort of uh, 5,000 uh, out, right, you know, you're, you're, that, that's what you're going to do. And then you're going to do 50 uh, to 1% and 100 to 2%. You've got to keep it like that because you will get sort of downturns. And, uh, yeah, you just want to play a little bit uh, cautious. And uh, as long as you're getting the odds in your favour, then everything's fine. And I'd also suggest at the beginning you start looking for higher uh, expected value. And the reason for that is it gives you more of a safety net and you don't get despondent too quickly. Of course, that can all be ironed out at a later date, and, uh, but it's just at the starting point, yeah? And as you progress, of course, then you're going to use the faster markets like in-play betting. You're going to have, you know, different uh, screens open. You're going to be watching the game. Uh, you're going to be looking um, for mistakes and odds. And you're going to, you know, jump on, right? And that's how you start to increase your betting bank significantly, right? It just gives you that more of an advantage, right? But uh, like I said, that's when you get to the stage of running a little bit, yes? 
And uh, yeah, and that means I would also suggest at this stage you learn, you, you open more betting accounts. So if you started with 10, you might want to get up to 20 betting accounts now. It would just give you more chance, more possibilities, more leverage, more, you know, it's just like you're, you're quicker so you can handle it and uh, it will give you even a higher return. And uh, then, of course, uh, start to think how you can get third party accounts because one or two of those early accounts that you've got might have been limited by now. Now, when I say you get third party betting accounts, you know, you can't ask your mother that's living in the same house as you to open an account because the bookmaker is going to say to you, well, this is the same IP address. It's one account per household and you might have problems. But uh, these are the ways around this, you know, I mean, this is something more down the line for another video. And we're going to talk about it in our sort of networking uh, uh, video, which is coming for professional gamblers pretty soon. Um, but uh, yeah, this is also important. Right. So that's about it. It's another one, a quick one uh, from today's uh, boot camp. And uh, we want to thank you for watching, you know, give us a like uh, if you're interested in the one to one coaching. Of course, you can get in touch with us if you've got the ability and uh, you've got the means. Uh, we can discuss that. Yeah. Um, please uh, go ahead, uh, subscribe and uh, like the video. We've got uh, quite a few more planned for you. And yeah, I mean, this channel is growing pretty fast now. You'll find uh, free tips, blogs, tutorials, etc. We often put these videos actually in uh, writing format on the website itself. So, you know, if you don't understand what I'm personally saying, maybe because of my accent or because uh, I talk too fast, <laughs> then, you know, that's also a possibility. You can actually go and read the text. That usually follows about uh, five or six days following the video. So that's it for now. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.